A false alarm about an armed hostage taker inside a pot dispensary shut down King Street W for almost three hours Thursday, causing major traffic chaos during the afternoon commute. Toronto police received one call about a person entering the business with a firearm, and possibly a hostage, at 1 p.m., const. Allison Douglas Cook said, when the emergency task force arrived, its members surrounded 365 dispensary and the underground garage at the southwest corner of King and Blue Jays Way. Curious onlookers milled nearby as officers tried to make contact with anyone in the store, without success. The building was found to be empty about three hours later. Rob Reed of the Toronto Police Service said investigators aren't sure if there really was a gun, if anyone was taken hostage, if people went in and out or even if people were there at all. There's a lot of missing pieces here, said Reed of the Toronto Police Service. Nathan Singh, 19, lives next door and said a negotiator was repeatedly shouting, everybody inside, come through the front door you will not get hurt. At one point, there were about 30 to 40 officers surrounding the building, he said. We really didnt have a lot of idea what we were going into and that's why the emergency task force was called in this situation, Douglas Cook said. Fortunately, they were able to go in and determine that there was no one in the establishment, and everyone is safe for now. King Street was closed from Peter Street to Spadina Avenue during the police investigation, forcing TTC streetcars 501 Queen, 504 King and 514 Cherry to turn back. Reese Jenkins, who owns the Peacock Bar next door to the dispensary, was downstairs working when he started receiving messages from concerned friends. He saw police at the stairs, but DIDNT want to startle them, so he called 911 and told them he was downstairs, Jenkins said. The dispatchers told him to come up hands up and police escorted him next door, it was pretty terrifying actually. It was a little surreal. But once I knew I was in good hands and they took me next door, it was okay, he said as police cleared the area. Sandy Mack, who was having lunch just down the street at Barhop when police arrived on scene, said she and others thought first thought police were raiding the dispensary. People started yelling freedom, freedom, she said. She knew it was more serious than that when 8 to 10 ETF officers arrived. Douglas Cook said the call may have been a prank, and, if so, it wasnt funny. Officers still have to treat such episodes as legitimate calls, deploying police and paramedics that may have been needed elsewhere, she added. Investigators are now trying to find the person who placed the call. It's unfortunate that someone can find that funny I find any humor in it, because there's nothing funny about disruption in people's lives, Douglas Cook said. Police called building landlord Salvasio to the scene with a key. They were able to enter and determine there was no one inside, said Vesio, who was accompanied by his lawyer Paul Voney. Phony said he hopes whoever made the false call is prosecuted. It's unfortunate that this happened in such a way you know you have a false alarm in this case and it shuts down pretty much all the TTC, all the intersections. My issue is what consequences are there going to be to this, he said. The fact that normal businesses are being harassed by certain individuals is extremely unfortunate. And, again, this should not be happening, Reed said. Investigators are likely looking for surveillance footage from the area, a video-rich environment, said Reed. Police are trying to figure out who placed the call to 911. With files from Alana Riz and Emma McIntosh.